today's lecture we're going to talk about measurements in science and this really should be um, a review from previous science classes. So one of the most important things when we take measurements in science is making sure that they are reliable and accurate. In order to do this, um, using the correct instrumentation is really important. We'll learn about um, what kind of instruments most accurately measure uh, volumes and grams and things like that. But also we need to have measurements that are easily understood by everyone and that's why in science we use the metric system. Okay, And uh, you may have seen this before but there's um, a way of remembering sort of the hierarchy of the metric system and it's King Henry died unfortunately drinking chocolate milk. So the K stands for kilo, H for hecto, D which is usually written with a capital D is deca, sometimes you'll see it as D with a little K as well. U is for the base unit, uh, D and typically written with a small d is deci, c uh, is centi, and m is milli. And there, it's a base 10 system, so we're just dealing with uh, moving decimal points uh, either left or right. Okay, Kilo is 1,000, um, hecto is 100, deca is 10, you know, and all the way down, and you can see that. So I'm just going to give you a couple of examples of making conversions using this metric ladder. Um, and you'll do some in class. And I think this should be review. Okay. So if we go ahead and look at this, let me just write down my little thing. King Henry died, unfortunately. And I'm going to do a little d for Desi chocolate milk. Okay. So let's say I have like 876 hectoliters. And I want to convert that to like little d deciliters. Okay, so what I would do is I go up here and I would say, okay, I'm starting at the h, and I'm going to move my decimal place one, two, three places to the right. Okay, so I would take 876 and I go one, two, three places to the right, fill it in with zeros, and that would give me 876,000 deciliters. Okay. Let's just do one more, okay? So let's say I've got like 12.75 centigrams, okay? And I want to convert that to, let's say, big D decagrams, okay? And I'm going to take my King Henry died, unfortunately, drinking chocolate milk, and I'm going to start with my C and go to my big D. So I go one, two, three places to the left. One, two, three places to the left. 0 0.01275 decagrams. Okay? And again, we'll do a couple of these examples in class and you'll get to practice with them and kind of get the hang of it again. <coughs> All right. So, um, I kind of want to talk about the base unit. So, we need to know what the base unit is for different types of measurement. Okay? Um, the first is uh, meters. Okay, so meters is the base unit, it would be the U, and King Henry died, unfortunately, drinking chocolate milk for length. That one we won't use very often in chemistry, you will if you don't take physics. Um, volume is liters, okay. Mass is grams. And um, temperature, we're going to be using the scale uh, Celsius. We'll also be using another scale, Kelvin, and we'll, and we'll get to that in a second. I'll discuss that. One thing I kind of want to point out about mass is mass is the amount of matter that you have in you. A lot of times people use it interchangeably with weight, but weight is actually the measure of the gravitational force on the mass. So on Earth, you have a certain weight, and if you were to go to the moon, you still have the same amount of matter in you, so you still have the same mass, but now you have a different weight because gravity is different there. Okay, I'm going to skip past this slide. Okay. Now, Celsius temperatures, um, Celsius is freezing is zero degrees. It's a lot easier to remember. Freezing in, in Fahrenheit, which we're used to, is 32 degrees. Uh, the boiling point at Celsius is 100 degrees, and for um, Fahrenheit, it's like 212. So it's a lot easier uh, to remember and do calculations with Celsius temperature scale. The other temperature scale we're going to use is the Kelvin temperature scale, and this was um, thought of by William Thompson Kelvin, and basically he said that temperature is the amount of energy you have because of the motion of your particles. So we looked at the states of matter, and we watched this little sim simulation, and we noticed that even if something was solid, its molecules or its particles were vibrating in place. 
and therefore it had energy, okay? The colder and colder you bring something, the less those molecules move until they stop moving altogether, and that's what we call absolute zero. And because this isn't a relative temperature scale, we don't use a degree symbol because it's not a degree of temperature, it's an absolute temperature. Okay. Now the last quick thing I want to talk about is density. We've already talked about density in the video about physical properties, but um, I want to show a calculation and talk a little bit about it. Density is the ratio of mass to volume, and it's a derived unit, and I'm going to show you what that means. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick example. Okay, so density is mass to volume ratio. Okay, and it's a physical property, so we can use the density of something to identify it. Okay, so let's say we've got like 15 grams is the mass of something, and its volume is 10 milliliters. We're going to use milliliters because that kind of makes a little bit more sense. Now, to calculate the density, I would take mass over volume. So density would equal 15 grams divided by 10 milliliters, which gives us 1.5. Well, what's the unit? Whatever you do to the numbers, you also do to the unit. So the unit is actually grams per milliliter. So this is a derived unit, a unit in which it is comparing, somehow mathematically comparing to other units. Again, we'll be using density a lot um, in order to identify substances. We'll be doing that in a lab, and you'll be doing it in exercises in class.